So we're going to go now to all nadir test. First question they asked us is the size of the all nadir. That is something we we'll need to get. Um, when we hook up to the all nadir, we'll need to look and see if it has the amperage rating. If that's not available, I recommend checking the parts manual. And you can see what the parts manual um, indicates the amperage rating of the all nadir is. You'll need to dial it in there. Now, on this alternator, the parts manual actually gives a few options. So we matched up the part number, and this machine has a 150 amp alternator. So we will set that rating. 4150 amps. Okay, we'll hit yes for next step. Now they want us to place the amps probe around the alternator output wire. That's going to be the heaviest cable on the alternator. That's going to be the best location to place this. So let's go install this over there. Now do remember, make sure you route it away from the fan and anything spinning. You don't want to damage this cable or probe in any way. So let's hook this up to the alternator. All right, so here we are on the other side of the engine. You notice that we have our alternator here. You can see the large output cable coming off of it. That's where we're going to attach our amps probe. And remember, we need to find our alternator rating. So you probably want to look this over with a light. We've already done that. I didn't see any marks indicating our rating, but what I did find is a part number. Using the parts manual, I was able to match that up, and it indicates that we have a 150 amp alternator. So we know our rating now to put into the machine. We want to stretch our cable through the engine here, just make sure it's not around any moving parts or fan. Now in this case, the current is going to be coming out of the alternator into the electrical system and battery, so we want that arrow pointing away from the alternator. We also don't want it too close so that the magnetic field inside the alternator doesn't interfere. So ideally, if we can be at least six or 12 inches away, that's great. Um, but you don't want to go around multiple cables. So never hook it around loom with a bunch of cables in it. You want to get just the single output wire. So you can see this goes into loom right back here. We're going to hook basically as close as we can to that, keeping it as far as possible from the alternator. It's all the way around there, making clean connection. Cable's routed where it won't hit anything. So now we're good to go back over and proceed with our alternator output test. All right, so now we have our amp probe connected. It's routed away from the fan or any hot or moving parts. Um, we're ready to move on to our next step, which is going to have us start the engine. Now remember, when we're doing alternator output, of course, the engine needs to be running. We have exhaust extraction hooked up. And what we'll need to do is rev the engine up. So we'll need to run it at about uh, half throttle. I know this machine says 2,000 RPMs. It's designed with gas engines in mind. Um, you want to be at least half to three quarter throttle on a diesel engine. We don't always have a tachometer to have an exact uh, indication of RPM. So we're going to press yes, that we're ready. And it will now move us or move us on to the next step. You will notice that while we're doing the test, it'll have us run it. And then it will at some point tell us to return to idle, so it can test the diodes in the alternator. It's a good idea to do this with the machine facing you in the cab. That's a, that's a great way to set it up. We're not doing that for this purpose so that the video will clearly show what the machine reads. But I have someone to communicate to me when to idle the machine down. So let's move on. Okay, it wants to verify is the amp probe connected around the alternator output wire? It is, so that's yes. And now it wants us to bring it to 2,000 RPM. Go. machine did not give me much time to start it, so we actually had to have someone else um, press yes while I was up in the machine ready to start it right away. But here you can see that it gives us our results. It says that our maximum output was 189 amps. 
diodes, tested good. It was checking for AC ripple current to determine that. So this overall is a good alternator. It says it's within spec. We, we expect the alternator output to be basically within 10% or so of its rating. And that could be above or below. So um, you can see we're actually above 10% for this one, but that's a certainly a good alternator and the diodes are good. We want to disconnect our amps probe, disconnect our um, AVR, but this really completes the, the alternator output test.